Sandcar crew, Conrad coming at you with another classified ad review on this epic two-seat long travel high horsepower V8 sandcar. But before we get there, I need to mention something to you. Sorry I didn't get you a classified ad review last week. I was out riding the BMX track and I took a pretty big spill and I broke my ribs or bruised my ribs or I hurt myself pretty bad, so. What? You want a cookie? Well, yes, actually. Cookies. Oh my gosh, these are delicious. Thank you. And without further ado, let's jump into this classified ad and take a closer look. Oh, and by the way, if you're interested in this particular car or any of the other sand cars you see for sale on this YouTube channel, hit us up on Facebook. Go find Sand Car Buy Sell Crew and you can reach out to the owner there or if you'd like to, just leave a comment and we'll go ahead and get you in contact. Also, head over to sandcarbuysell.com and get yourself some merch. Ding. And consider supporting us financially through the Patreon link that's below. Or just hit that subscribe button. It's free. All right, all right. So without further ado, here's the description. Let's see what we see. This car is brought to you by Sandcar Buy Sell crew member Josh Morrow out of Sacramento, California. He is asking $100,000 or best offer or trades. And he does request serious inquiries and cash only, so bring a big old bag of cash. This car is a one-off build from Marshall Moto Art. It is a two-seat, 133-inch wheelbase car, so it's long, right? This car is going to be extremely stable and extremely stable through the whoops. We've got an LS7 topped off with a Ken Bell blower. Or is that Kenny Bell? Do you go by Ken Bell or Kenny Bell? I don't know. But it's got a blower on it, 1110 horsepower to the crank, right? So what does that mean after... Going through all the drivetrain, you got to figure it's probably what, 900 horsepower to the wheel, somewhere around there. Did I get that right? I don't know at all, you guys. I mean, you can tell me what you think. Just saying. We've got a Mendiola S4 sequential. He puts the best trans Mendiola makes, and I concur. Three and a half King coilovers with 22 and 24 inch travel, respectively. And on the interior, check this out. We happen to have a fully custom one off dash. Auto meter Nexus gauges for six and a half diamond highs and mids, two 10 inch subs and 3000 watts. Reminds me of a country song. Which one was it? Oh, that's right. $100,000 was a heck of a deal for 1100 horsepower jukebox on wheels. I did mention that I sing karaoke, right? Horribly. Okay, cowboy, let's get back on track. Moving on, what do we see? iPod, iPhone controlled stereo system, which is, that's pretty amazing, right? Lawrence GPS, Icon car to car, PCI race radios, CNC cutting brakes, and gas pedal hanging, clutch and brake pedal, Momo steering wheel, and a custom wrap done by Dustin over at Elite Appearance in Rockland. All right, let's jump into these photos. So the first thing that I see that is so striking about this car is the stance. I mean, check this out. That SoCal pre-runner look that everybody does with their rangers so we've got a nice angle to the suspension on this huge set of wheels and tires these are the uh, sand tires unlimited razor masters so that's going to be on a 17 inch wheel it's a triple razor and we've got beadlock wheels all the way around i don't know what kind of wheels these are and i don't want to misrepresent but it looks like a really nice wheel and here's the thing about big tires that is the bigger the tire the smaller the hole, right? And you know what that means, because if you're running an old school car with a Sand Tires Unlimited 450, the little rubber band stretched down the aluminum wheel, it falls right into the holes that these big front tires dig whenever they're turning, right? So we want to put some bigger tires on the car, and this is a pretty epic setup. So what else do I see? We've got a full body on here. Beautiful side panel work. A, B, and C, structurally sound with an extra uh, pillar right here, which is super nice if you happen to endo this car to not squish the cage right here. Yes, I said squish. On the top, that is the Lawrence GPS antenna. We've got the light bar. Looks like a beautiful set of headlights. You know, makes it kind of look like an automobile. Side steps, always important. Look at the uh, bracing in the back for this bypass and this coilover. It's pretty epic. All right, let's jump on to the next. All right, check out the front end of this car. How's this for coming at you? This is an really bitchin' body. I don't know if this is aluminum, if this is carbon fiber, if this is a combination of both, but check out the detail work on this with the stars put in there. I mean, somebody spent some time on this to make this body and to fit these headlights in here. Also, you can see we got some chrome and black powder coat. Looks like billet uh, spindles, actually. And let's see, rack and pinion right up front. What do you say, 22 inches of wheel travel in the front. Whoop-de-doos. What whoop-de-doos. 
Next. Okay, so we're moving on to the front three-quarter view, and I didn't see much on this compared to the other side, right? But I did notice that this has a really nice arch to it here. Fits that front tire flow to the car. I mean, it looks like it's going 100 miles an hour sitting still. This this thing's just amazing. Next. Okay, so here's a shot of the passenger side. And once I pulled this up, I realized, you know what? This is a two-seater, but it looks like it's big enough to put a couple of bucket seats in the back or maybe a bench seat to turn it into a five-seater. It's got a couple of scoops probably for the radiator. I'm not exactly sure. We'll get to take a look at those a few pictures down the line. It looks to me like you would be able to, to swap those out if necessary. We'll have to ask Josh. But what do we see here? Pretty stout trailing arm, good shot of the beadlocks in the back and your coil over with your bypass. Again, the structure that you've got here. I love the mini wing, right? Wings out the back are cool, but they stick far out the back, right? When you're loading it up or you're hauling it in your enclosed trailer and you're bumping your wing, you'll see them up dinged up. I love this style right here where it's tucked up in the back. Moving on. All right, so now we've got a rear three quarter view. We're getting closer to the business end of things, right? And check out this wing, as I had mentioned before, aluminum work that's done. That's that's swooped, right? It's not just a straight across wing. It's not just cut and dry. I'm to really make this swoopy and designy and I think that that's what gives this car an overall look of going 100 miles an hour while sitting still. I mean, it just looks fast. And again, looking at the roof line coming down here, the triangulation and the bracing for these Kings. I mean, I'm a huge fan of King Chalks. It's beautiful. So we've got a set of headers on here. Looks like some chrome and polish plus the supercharger. Oh yeah. All right, so let's get the rear end view. And here we are at the rear of the car, which is what most of us will ever see is that plus sand shooting us in the face because this car has just got to be an absolute handful to drive. So super bitchin', super clean setup. Look at the rear of the cage. Again, you know, I was talking about the swoopy lines on the, the rear wing. Look at the tube work. Oh, it bends like this, and then it bends like this. And then we got the two tubes going down there. I mean, this is just an absolutely beautiful build. So Josh had mentioned that this is a one-off build by, what was that, Marshall Moto Art. And you know, when I see a one-off car like this, what you're seeing is whoever built the chassis, this was their blood, sweat, and tears that they put into this, but it was also what was in their head. I mean, they literally stood back and said, let's make these tubes do this, these tubes do this, these come under here, the triangulation go like this, and it's a piece of art. It's a thousand horsepower, 3000 watt stereo <laughs> rolling piece of art. I mean, this car just reeks rock and roll. I mean, I, I absolutely love it. All right, so we get a cockpit view of driving this car, right? So we see the quad stopper, at least that's what I call them, I call them quad stoppers, and then you see the triangulation through the roof here, and then also that extra A pillar that comes down ties into some triangulation down here as well. So extremely safe, extremely stout car. You can't go wrong if you wreck it. You know, you're gonna throw your wheels and tires off, but I mean, willing to bet you can take it back into the shop and get this car rebuilt and uh, hit the sand again in no time. So we've got a nice set of bucket seats. Looks like that leather steering wheel. I think you said that was Momo, right? Got some speakers. Is that a speaker? I don't know what that is, actually. Five-point harnesses. Thank you, Josh. Much appreciated. You know, I'm big on safety and five-point harnesses are definitely important. Here's the hanging gas pedal. So, you know, for folks that are new to dune buggies, the gas pedal and uh, brake and clutch used to be mounted on the floor. So now we've got this setup that is a hanging brake and clutch pedal and it's a lot easier to push because the articulation of the pedals and then you have your gas pedal that's mounted on the ground. Nice full array of switches. Here we have the sequential shifter for that Mendiola transmission. We've got our communication. Oh look there's a couple speakers in the dash. I did see a speaker like right here. So I'm telling you like <laughs> <laughs> fire up this engine and fire up the stereo. I'm thinking, what song would I want to put on on this? I think if I was rolling out of camp, I'd be playing Walk by Pantera. Just cruising out, right? And then once you hit the dunes and you can open it up, I'd be like, Metallica, kill them all. I mean, I, you'd just be going crazy driving this car with, with 3,000 watts of kill them all playing while you're romping on that throttle and listening to that blower whine. It's got to be amazing. Okay, okay, I'll stop dreaming about what it's like to drive this car. Let's get on to the next photo. Now, I'm not an electrical guy. I don't wire my own cars. I have somebody else do it because it's just like spaghetti to me, right? But when I'm looking at this, just look how clean the wiring setup is in this. Now I know these are fuses. I don't know what these are. I don't know what that is. That says Viper on it. It tells me it's an alarm. I don't know. I have no idea what all these are. You electrical guys, you know what all that stuff is. And you know that if it went bad when you were out in the dunes, in the middle of the dunes, how easy it would be to trace that to get it resolved and get you back out on the sand. The other thing about this that I spotted when I was looking at it was, I was, oh yeah, check it out. So it's got an Odyssey battery, right? But look what's right next to it. Oh, there's those woofers, right? He's got that box built in under there as well. So you got a little bit of bass while you're rolling, rolling through the dunes. So epic setup, really good job. I'm really impressed with this car. Next. 
Okay, so here's our interior shot pointed towards the back. And again, we've got some nice leather seats. I'm not sure what that brand is. I'm, I i don't even want to say guess. But here's something that's kind of cool. It's almost got an armrest in there, right? Pro harnesses, again, with the crotch strap. Always got to have it. Walker brakes for each wheel. I'm a fan of the dual handle versus the single handle. And then here's these... Again, 100 miles an hour sitting still. I don't know what these are, if it's not just decoration, but it looks like you might even have a little bit of a trunk or something down here too, but the airflow going right into the radiator. So this is a really nice setup. Again, here we go, the triangulation in the back. I see that there. This looks like a, an epic car, super bitchin'. Next, again, another shot of those epic, almost like Corvettes, like, you know, I don't know. I can't, I'm trying to think of the race cars. Anyway, really nice gas tank right here on the side where you can access it and you can get to it. Great placement for the gas filler. Check out these boxed upper shock mounts as well as the boxed trailing arms. I mean, it is definitely built tough. This is a super awesome car. All right, so that rounds out the interior. Let's jump back into the front end shot coming at you, right? Or loading this up into your trailer. So we're at $100,000 or best offer or trade. He's based out of Sacramento, California. We've got an LS7 with a blower. We said Mindale, the S4 sequential, you can't go wrong. And a 3000 watt stereo. So this car has just got to be a lot of fun. So Josh Morrow, thank you very much for posting this up on Sand Car Buy Sell Crew on Facebook. Book. It's a super epic build. I really like this car. Hopefully I'll get to go for a ride in it out in uh, what St. Anthony's or out in Nevada one day. But otherwise I'll say thank you for watching. See you in the dunes. Three, two, one. What? You want a cookie? Oh my god, these are delicious. <coughs> auto meter gauges. Auto meter. But looks fast going. Looks fast going slow. Looks fast stop.